welcome to the meadows in Meadowlands, Pennsylvania. It's in the hills of western Pennsylvania. A clear and cool night the people at the meadows are enjoying for the Breeders' Crown Race for two-year-old trotting colts. Ten fine young trotters in the field tonight. We're looking forward to a great race here. We're also going to be showing you during the evening today's Kentucky Futurity from the Red Mile in Lexington, a, a trotting classic, so a great evening of trotting here on ESPN. Hi, everybody. I'm Sharon Smith, along with Stan Bergstein of the Harness Tracks of America. And not only are we looking forward, Stan, to seeing some good trotting colts, but some of the great drivers in the world tonight. Well, the best in the business are here for this race. They say that it all comes down to the Breeders' Crown. In the case of the two-year-old trotters, it certainly is tonight. I think the season's champion will emerge from this race. And, of course, we have the great pair of Campbell and O'Donnell who have been dominating harness racing's money winnings, each one winning over $7 million in purses this year. They're both here tonight. And, of course, since we are seeing trotters, we do see these great uh, trainers who love to drive their own trotters. We're seeing Stanley Dancer and others. That adds some excitement, too. Well, historically and traditionally, the trainer and the driver used to be the same in harness racing, but that is one of the major changes in the last decade in the sport. And part of the reason is because of O'Donnell and Campbell, who have won over a third this year, last year, of all the races raced at the Meadowlands, most of them with horses they did not train themselves. Of course, uh, nowadays, uh, even a great trainer who can drive is perfectly willing to hire one of these good drivers should he need it. Well, of course, we saw Bill Houghton hire Bill O'Donnell to drive Nihilator. And uh, we are seeing a little bit of that tonight as well. Bill O'Donnell's here. John Campbell is here. Both of them coming in to drive horses trained by other people. Kenny Rice is paddock side for us tonight to talk to one of those great drivers. Thank you, Sharon. In the late 1940s, a man came along and revolutionized the way that drivers approached races. His name, Stanley Dancer, and he believed in the aggressive style to take the lead early and wire-to-wire -wire wins. In the late 70s, a pair of gentlemen came along and changed catch driving as we know it now. They've turned it into an art form. Bill O'Donnell and the man with me, John Campbell. John, tonight you're driving Express Ride, one of the favorites. Now, you've driven him twice last week in Lexington. On a catch drive like this, do you look a lot at past forms? Do you talk a lot to the trainers? How do you approach a race? Oh, definitely. With a colt like this, he's a you know, two-year-old trotter, and you have to be fairly careful with him. I talked to George quite a bit before I raced him the other day, and I'll talk to him again before he races, and uh, he knows him best. He's, uh, he's made the colt what he is. Now, this colt has been impressive this season. Some talk about how he would go through the turns. How do you think he can handle the turns here tonight at the Meadows? Well, I don't think they're going to be a great big help to him, but at the same time, I don't think they'll hinder him. I think he'll, he'll trot them okay, the same as he did at Lexington. Now, you mentioned that you go over it a lot with George Schulte. Does it make a difference when you're with a two-year-old like you have tonight, a trotter, say, compared to a three-year-old or an aged horse? Oh, definitely, and especially when they're trotters, uh, more so than the pacers. The, the trotters have more idiosyncrasies, and you have to watch for them a little bit, and, uh, and he'll let me know what he seems like and what he trained like this week. Thank you very much, John. Good luck tonight. Man who's been in all these Breeders' Crowns, and he is driving one of the favorites tonight in Express Ride. Going up against Bill O'Donnell, they have been 1-2 for the last six years, splitting the last six of the money-winning championships, and they are 1-2 again this season. Sharon? Well, Kenny, there's another trend very apparent tonight, a trend in trotting, and that's the dominance. Well, we have to mention two stallions. There's Super Bowl. He does have two sons here tonight, but Speedy Crown, the great New York Bay stallion, five sons and two grandsons. This, uh, this is a dominant horse. Well, he is to trotting what Meadows Skipper was uh, to pacing. Speedy Crown has now dominated the sport, and his son, Speedy Somali, taking it up where he's left off. Five of the horses in the nice race, as you mentioned, are by Speedy Crown, but two others, Farm King and On the Take, are by Speedy Somali, who is his son. They were both dominant horses in their racing years, too. Well, here are uh, his five sons. Mangrove will be one of the favorites, and, of course, Royal Prestige as well and uh, Speedy Crown, very handsome as well as Fast Horse, which is a good thing for the breed in general. So all of that is ahead, including the big race here on ESPN tonight, the Breeders' Crown Trot for two-year-old Colts. And uh, the odds, perhaps, in the morning line, a little bit interesting. Now, the number one horses are an entry. You see Sarath Lobel there listed as two to one. Well, it's Express Ride's membership of that entry, really, that makes that group two to one, uh, because he is... Uh, presumably the best horse in that group. Mangrove will get a lot of support. Uh, Stanley Dancer thought earlier in the year that this was among the best trotters that he had ever had, and, and he really still and is he still... Was right. He's still very, very good, certainly. Uh, the, among the other choices, well, some of them are long shots. The, on the take, which Bill O'Donnell has, is a little bit of a long shot, but uh, he, he'll get some support, of course, because Bill O'Donnell is there. Royal Prestige, you see there at 3-1, to one, perhaps coming out of the second tier, otherwise he would have been the morning line favorite, don't you well, think? Well, I would think so, and I'm not sure that the second tier is going to bother him all that much. A surprise in the morning line, or in the betting, is 12-1 to 1 on Long Legend, who looked pretty good and is coming on. He's a horse that is improving, and I would think that, that is probably, that's a rather attractive price on him. First column, of course, are the post positions. 
Well, that is it. That is the trot for two-year-old Colts and Geldings, the third race in the 1985 Breeders' Crown Series. The Breeders' Crown on ESPN is brought to you by Hemp Farms, home of the Keystones. And by U.S. Air, with service to over 100 cities across the U.S. and Canada. And by Castleton Farm, tradition of excellence, commitment to the future. We're going to take a short time out and then be back with more from the Meadows in Pennsylvania, including a look at the increasing Swedish influence in U.S. harness racing, a particular influence in the sport of trotting. Welcome back to the Meadows, where the two-year-old Colton Gelding trot in the Breeders' Crown Series is still ahead. And, of course, we're seeing in this race, which we, is something that we see in all major trotting races, really, in this country these days, and the, enorm it's the enormous influence of Swedish owners, trainers, and drivers. I was at Decoin this summer and saw uh, something like a six-horse entry of uh, Swedish horses going out. It wouldn't out. hurt to learn Swedish if you're going to follow trotting. And it all goes back to three brothers, Gusta Gunnar and Soren Nordin, who came out of Sweden many, many years ago. Soren is the only one living. He's here now. But Bernd Lindstedt, one of the trainers and drivers in tonight's race, learned his racing under Gusta. Håkon Wallner, another one, of course, the head of the Continental Stable, learned his under the brother Gunnar. And Per Eriksson, one this year's Hamiltonian, learned his under Soren Nordin, as well as Jan Nordin did. Jan Janssen, who was the fourth member of that big uh, group, uh, didn't learn from the Gunnar uh, brothers, from the Nordin brothers, but came from Forsa in Sweden, the same town where they did. So it's a dynasty. Oh, indeed, it is. They're very creative and inventive in their training of horses. Uh, they don't give all the credit to themselves. Here's Kenny Rice with one of the members of this Swedish connection. Let's go to Kenny. The stake record by Flack Bates. Ten years ago, Continental Farm began this Swedish influence on trotting here in the United States. The man leading the way was Hawken Walner. Joining him is a man with me now, John Johnson and also Bernd Lindstedt. And John, it has been phenomenal the success that you have had with trotters here in the States in the last 10 years. You believe in training them hard, training them early. It has revolutionized the way that North Americans have looked at the sport. What do you think has been the key for your success here? I think we have good support from our owners to buy good bred horses, first of all. And we've been very lucky to have some good horses. And uh, overseas, we can only have trotters, so we have to make all the trotters trot. Like here, you know, uh, Charlie won't trot that good. You can always put them on the pace, so that maybe that's an advantage we have over there. You know, we had to try with everything. And tonight you have four in this race. You're going to be driving Farm King. How does he look? Yeah, he was sick out in Decoin about a month ago, and he only had one race from that. And he ran a little short in Lexington last week. He turned in 59 in a piece. But uh, if he gets a good trip, he might get a check. The one getting the most attention, though, of those that you have been training is Royal Prestige, driven by Hawken Wallner tonight. He is coming out of the second tier, but that isn't too bad with ten horses tonight. No, I don't think so. It's better than eight and nine on this track here because it's so way out there, and he can, Hawk can always make a choice. And you don't have to follow the one horse if he doesn't want. So, and there's a lot of speed up front there, so I think he's going to get away good. You ever have trouble keeping up with all the horses you got in the races? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. Good luck tonight. John Johnson's had a lot of experience with that. He has four in tonight's race, and that is not uncommon for he and for Continental Farms. Sharon? Thanks, Kenny. Are, is he being a little too modest? Yeah, modesty is one of their qualities, but he mentions the owners buy them. They pick them out, however. That's what makes the difference. Which is the real burden, really. Well, it is a good group of horses that they've got. They do have what will probably be the favorite entry in the Breeders' Crown Trot for two-year-old Colts. The Meadows in Western Pennsylvania for the third race in the 1985 Breeders' Crown Series. We've had two races. The first uh, was won by the favorite. Sandy Bowl was the winner. Last week, though, on the road again, was the favorite. At the time, was the richest pacer in the, uh, in the history of standard bread racing and he lost a, a rough trip for him though well it was a rough trip it was a rough gated trip but one of the things that happened was that the horse apparently saw something buddy gilmore didn't but on the road again apparently didn't try to jump over it and when he did he broke stride momentarily he came back on the stride and uh, when that happened he got rough from there and gilmore could not determine what it was he still doesn't know what it was but we'll show you there here's on the road again and watch what happens here as he comes around the turn he and he tried to leap over something. Now Gilmore looks down on both sides of the bike, trying to see if it was equipment. He looks on one side, looks on the other side, can't see anything, and never did determine that it was equipment. But the horse got rough-gated again during the course of the mile, and it might just be wear and tear. He has been racing constantly, week after week, since March, 
and they're not machines, and he apparently might be getting to show just a little bit of the strain and stress of the campaign. Of course, one of the problems is he did it at a very inappropriate time as he's in a battle for Harness Horse of the Year. Also last week, Prakas lost a couple of races. He was another contender, didn't go in the Kentucky Futurity today. In the meantime, Nihilator last week paced the fastest mile in the history, racing mile in the history of the Red Mile. Today, went a fifth faster at the Red Mile, so he's really on top, isn't well, he? Well, he's rolling now, and of course now he's doing what he should be doing, which is racing horses and beating them. He's adding to his reputation and luster, and as you say, it comes at a time when his opposition is going the other direction. So Annihilator is piling up points in the poll. Indeed he is. He's earning himself some money and getting some fast times, too, if fast times are what they're Great looking horse. for. Great yeah. horse, no question about it. And the fact that he doesn't go to, if he doesn't get to beat the time trial record of his sire, Nyatros won't make a bit of difference. He's still a great horse. And we get to see him at the end of November in the final race of the Breeders' Crown Series for three-year-old Colt and Gelding Pacers. Now, we mentioned earlier the Kentucky Futurity. It is the third leg of the trotting triple crown. This is the big week at the Red Mile in Lexington. Prakas was not in the race. He has a little bit of sickness. Uh, he did race last week. He lost. He wasn't there, but it was still a good field of uh, three-year-old trotters, mostly Colts. There was one filly, and in fact, in elimination number one, it was the filly who came out on top. Armbro Devona was the winner of elimination number one, of heat number one, of the Kentucky Futurity race today at the Red Mile in Lexington. Let's look at the uh, stretch run of Armbro Devona, and uh, she was pretty quick, 57 and 1. There's a real test. The Kentucky Futurity at the end of the year usually is a race where fillies come to dominate if they're going to dominate. Very difficult for fillies to win against males even in trotting, but it happens more often, and Armbro Devona stamped herself today with class. She really did. Now, again, again the uh, field divided into two divisions, so heat number one divided up. The, ex the uh, other group of horses, really, were in division two of heat number one. Probably the stronger group, I, I think we would have to say, and it certainly produced an outstanding time. Let's take a look at the stretch uh, of that race now. Flat bait uh, are involved in this one. Well, starting in mid-season last year when he was a two-year-old, Blackbait began to draw a comment from his trainer and driver, Ben Webster. And he's Webster. He said, I've got a top one. He may be one of the best three-year-olds next year. It'll take him a long time to prove it, but here he is proving it today. And he went in 55-2, and two, which was uh, the fastest heat ever of the Kentucky Futurity. The way it works is the top finishers in each of those two eliminations come back for the second heat. If either of the first two winners wins again, it's all over. Otherwise, they have a race-off. Well, uh, that's what happened. Uh, the uh, second heat went to the horse that a lot of people probably thought was going to win the whole thing going in. So they, I guess we're not surprised when Nearly Perfect came out on top in the second heat of the Kentucky Fur Futurity Day. Again, a very fast time for this horse. Uh, he is back in form again. This horse was good early, then got off. Uh, but he is back now in peak form, and he showed it here again in this uh, heat of yes, he trots home in uh, 155 and 2. Okay, so it was nearly perfect uh, joining Armbro Devona and Flakbait in the race off. See, a horse has to win twice, and it's a rough afternoon for these horses, but indeed one did. So three horses into the, uh, into the final or the race off. Nearly perfect was the favorite at three to five. Of course, the fans there remembering what he had did, done the previous week to practice. Flakbait at eight to five. Armbro, Armbro Devona at five to two. Of course, there's no real long shot in a field of three really good trotters. So that is it. Let us take a look now at the uh, race-off of the Kentucky Futurity for 1985. Nearly perfect flak bait, Armbro Devona, Carl Becker has the call. Here they come. They're off and trotting between horses. Flack bait first away on the inside. Nearly perfect will be away second. And the filly drops over third. Armbro Devona trails as that field rolls around the lower turn now, trotting toward the quarter mile mark. And Flack bait will dictate fractions. He leads for Benny Webster by a length and a half on the inside. Racing second, nearly perfect with Mickey McNichol. And at the back, Armbro Devona as they leisurely trot around the turn toward the quarter mile mark. O'Donnell guiding the filly third as they reach the quarter station with the lead. Flack bait by a length and a half. They're at the quarter, trotting past that mark, 30 and 2. They're on the back stretch, waiting second down the backside, nearly perfect. Armbro Devona content along the rail third as they trot toward the half mile mark. The speedy Somali three year old flak bait in command for Benny Webster by a length and a half, waiting second still, nearly, nearly perfect. The Song Can three year old, and at the back, the speedy.
Down Philly Armbro Devona as they approach the half mile mark. With the lead, Flack Bates, second still at the half, nearly perfect in third Armbro Devona. No move as they race past that mark. They're at the half in a minute, four fifths. Both the first and second quarters trotted in 30 and two fifths. And now they're in the third quarter. They're trotting toward the draw gate with the lead by a length, still Flack Bait. Yet to move from second is nearly perfect. Armbro Devona waits third as they roll around the final turn, trotting with the lead. Black bait waiting nearly perfect and Armbro Devona. And now they're trotting quicker as they approach the three quarters. They're past the draw gate and Flack bait leads. And here he comes, nearly perfect, flushing to the outside. Armbro Devona yet to move from third. They're at the three quarters, 132 and four. They're in the final quarter mile. Kentucky Futurity, three-year-olds turn for home on the outside. Racing up now, nearly perfect on the inside, trying to fight him off his Flack bait. And now the Philly joins him. She's three wide in the lane. On the inside, Flack bait. And Flack bait very strong in the stretch. On the outside, nearly perfect coming at him. Flack bait, nearly perfect. Armbro Devona to the wire. Flack bait is going to win the Kentucky Futurity. 159-3, it's Flack bait. And Benny Webster, judges have called for a photo between Flack bait and nearly perfect. And Flack bait got it. Nearly perfect second. Armbro Devona third. All three distinguished him or herself in the Kentucky Futurity race off today. Well, the breeders... Your old trot is ahead, but up next, we are going to visit Delvin Miller in Pennsylvania. There's no one more associated with horse racing in western Pennsylvania than the man who lives on this farm just a few miles from the track. It's Delvin Miller, and you can't think of the meadows without thinking of Delvin and of Adios, the great pacing stallion who bought to stand at his farm. His uh, dam was a world champion. His great grand dam was a world champion. And there was some breeding in the background there I liked real well not only made the farm, it made Meadowlands, Pennsylvania, and it made the racetrack, really. Adios has been gone for 20 years now, but Delvin Miller still stands good stallions. This is Arn Don. He is especially welcome because he is a fast and handsome trotter. I do like the trotter. They're self, you, they, you have to balance them. You have to make a trotter. You can just put hobbles on a picture and hit them on the butt and go on with them. But trotters are, and they're, they're like a good golfer. You know, you've got a good swinger. Baseball pitchers uh, can uh, throw it good, and uh, trotter that way. They've got to have a, you don't see a bad gator trotter winning big races. They're well balanced and carry their heads right, right. And they're a little prouder looking even to me than a pacer, although any pacer that's winning is, you know, they're proud looking. Delvin remembers his good trotters most fondly. Delmonica Hanover was a special favorite of his. Harness racing has changed over the years, but he thinks not entirely for the better. I don't think it's quite the sport it was when I started out in. You know, it's more of a business now. It was always a business, but it's more of a business now. You know, we used to go through, like we'd go to the, the Grand Circuit at Springfield and Duke Coin, Sedalia, Missouri, Milwaukee. We'd all stay there the whole week. You know, you were chummy and friendly, and the owners would go out there and say, now it's all, can you set that race up quicker so I'd fly back and race this horse and that? I think it's, it's, uh, it's really a business now. Delvin is 72 years old now, but he still trains and intends to return to driving once he recovers from back surgery he underwent this year. I, I still, uh, I like to drive home because I, uh, that's the only th thrill I get of maybe something I've bred or something and drive your own. I still like it and I've, I still feel I can compete with them. When I feel I can't, if I get to shake it, I said, that'll be my last time in driving. I tell you, every sport could use a Delvin Miller. He is one of the greatest men in any sport. He is a sports worshiper, a hero worshiper of other people and doesn't realize what a hero he is. He's done everything in this sport. He's been a trainer, been a driver. He founded this racetrack, the Meadows, of course, been a breeder, a great breeder, who was responsible for the career of Adios, superman and a super gentleman. And he's so enthusiastic. Uh, we were talking today about Arndon, who's first falls to reach ra the racetrack uh, next year, and he says, boy, how could you even think of retiring when you've got Arndon's coming up? And, and he wouldn't think in a million years of that, in spite of the fact that he did have some back surgery this year. Very enthusiastic. He had the back surgery recently and is back getting into action. He has raced in 45 different countries around the world. And wherever you go, where there's a harness horse, they know the name Delvin Miller for of good course, cause. Of course, he's here tonight, and he'll be watching enthusiastically as these young 
trotting colts and geldings compete for the Breeders' Crown. Again, the entry that includes Express Ride is the morning line favorite for the Breeders' Crown race for two-year-old trotting colts and geldings. Royal Prestige, probably as well-bred as a horse could possibly be, is likely to be the second choice. And that is all ahead here on ESPN. We'll be updating the odds for you as they come in. And, of course, we will show you the race as these colts compete for nearly half a million dollars in the Breeders' Crown race just ahead. We're back at the Meadows in Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania, for the third race in the 1985 Breeders' Crown Series. I'm Sharon Smith, along with Stan Bergstein and Kenny Rice, and we are going to see a field of 10 two-year-old trotting colts. And, in fact, the post parade is just about ready to start uh, for these good young colts. Again, we've got an entry, so you're going to have to look at the 1, the 1A, the 1B, and keep them straight. Of course, if you were here at the track and got to bet on them, you'd uh, get three good horses for the price of one. It's, it's a good field of trotting colts. Uh, although there hasn't been a real dominant horse emerge, they are good. First of all, Surath Lobel. This is a speedy crown colt owned by Hanley Dawson, Ulf Moberg, and Hugh Grant. And uh, the driver tonight, Tom Houghton, replacing Buddy Gilmore. Surath Lobel, the number one horse, leading the post parade tonight for the Breeders' Crown Race for two-year-old trotting colts. The 1A is the reason why this entry uh, was listed in the morning line at 2 to 1. This is Express Ride. John Campbell in to drive this colt. Uh, Castleton Farm, William Simon, yes, uh, former uh, Secretary of the Treasury, and Hanley Dawson, the owners of this colt. And he is, uh, was a $140,000 yearling, and that is how he raced. In fact, he's raced like a, a little bit more of a high-priced colt than that, a Super Bowl colt. Number 1B, the final horse in this entry, is Salem Lobel, another speedy crown colt. Hanley Dawson and Ulf Moberg, the owners of this colt. And we've got Bern Lindstedt driving this one. Uh, he comes out of Continental Farm Stable. He's a $40,000 yearling. He is part of the entry, which is certainly getting a lot of interest tonight. Salem Lobel, the number 1B in the post parade tonight. This is Stanley Dancer, the great Stanley Dancer and Mangrove. This is his speedy crown colt that he is so enthusiastic about. He is partial owner of it, as is Clearview Sable. Several of his, uh, his longtime patrons are, are together on this colt, uh, and it's a, a good partnership, and Stanley, of course, is thrilled to be driving this colt. He, of course, had the great colt Dancer's Crown a couple of years ago. I'm not sure whether this colt is quite as good, but he's not far behind if he isn't. This is Mangrove, a speedy crown colt. The number three entry is Farm King, a speedy Somali colt, which is owned by Kurt Burtmark of Florida. Uh, this one is uh, Jan Janssen driven, Continental Farm Stable, again, another of the uh, Swedish trained horses. Farm King, a son of speedy Somali, a son of speedy crown. Of course, it is nighttime, so it's a little bit dark on the track. Continuing on with the horses in our post parade, that was the number three Farm King. Let us take a look at... Uh, well, let's continue looking a little bit long. Well, this is number five. We can go on to him. This is Long Legend. We will take a look at Long Legend here on the track. Long Legend is uh, trained and driven by John Simpson, Jr. Had a terrible accident here at the Meadows last year, and uh, uh, people who are his friends and even just fans were terrified of the uh, possibilities. He has recovered. He is driving again, driving well, and he is out here tonight with Long Legend. This is a Super Bowl called owned by John Gaines and Nelson Bunker Hunt. The number six horse is Predominant. This is another speedy crown colt owned by Richard Staley of California. He uh, was bred by Castleton Farm, $130,000 yearling. This, is, this colt is trained and driven by Doug Ackerman. He's got four wins in his brief racing career. That is Predominant. Now, continuing on, this is the number seven horse, Tory Sweep. This is owned by David Weldon of Ontario. Uh, in fact, it's a homebred colt by uh, Florida Pro. Bill Wellwood is the trainer and driver of this colt. He's got five wins in his 12 starts. He's a, a consistent young colt, this, uh, this Tory Sweep by Florida Pro. Now, Royal Prestige is, uh, he certainly deserves his name. He's sired by Speedy Crown out of the great race mare Rosemary by Neville Pride. He was bred to be a great horse, and he's, he really is turning out to be. The Workaholics, too, uh, some of the same people that owned Workaholic are involved in the ownership of this colt. And uh, Hocken Volner has chosen to drive this one. He cost $225,000 as a yearling. Certainly is worth it, even though that's an awful lot of money. That is Royal Prestige, number eight, in tonight's race for two-year-old trotting colt. So we have seen a good bunch of young horses. Um, also in the field, on the take, Bill O'Donnell, the driver, coming out of Quebec. Caval Enterprises owns him. He's a speedy Somali colt. So that is a look at the field for the uh, British Crown race for two-year-old trotting colts. And I know, Stan, you've seen some that you like a lot. Well, I like the whole field. I'd like to have any one of them in the field. <laughs> but the one, of course, that's won the most money in here is Express Ride. He has won $602,000 so far. And here you see him beating Long Legend 
uh, at Lexington a week ago. This Colts won suit 602000 if he wins a check tonight, which means if he finishes in the first five, because they all get money, he will become the richest two-year-old trotter ever. That title right now goes to another miracle who's won $607,000. And there you see John Campbell, who is driving Express Ride. George Scholey is the trainer, but Campbell took over last week uh, driving him and is back again uh, to this evening in the sulky. The next horse up is the horse that horsemen think might be the best two-year-old of the entire group. This is Royal Prestige coming up, and he will be driven by Hawken Volner, who is the man that has started in the last decade the Swedish invasion of the United States. In 1974, he began going very, very strong, and since then, his continental stable has been dominant. There you see Walner and Royal Prestige. He has post position 10, which means he starts in the second tier. He's won 144,000 this year. He has won his last four starts, and he beat Express Ride last week at Lexington in a very close finish by a neck. He'll have to come out of that second tier. He'll follow Mangrove out, who is a very, very fast horse, and we'll take a look at Mangrove. He is Stanley Dancer's hopeful in the race. This is Walner, and here is Mangrove, showing his form for Dancer on the outside. You see him closing on the outside during the long stretch at Lexington. This is a colt who is out of uh, a mare called Thicket. She was a half-sister to Conifer, who won a Breeders' Crown Philly Stake last year. Dancer developed eight different trotters that sold for a million dollars or more, which isn't bad for a 4-H boy who comes <laughs> up from the farm, and that's the way all 4-H boys should do it. But here he is with Mangrove, and he hopes to add to the total tonight. Then you get Predominant, who is the uh, next horse in Long Legend. Uh, we should take a look at Long Legend. There's Dancer with uh, Mangrove scoring down just before the start here tonight. He is ready, and he is in post position, too. And when he goes out of there, you'll see early speed. This colt has a lot of early speed, and I imagine he'll be in front. Here's John Simpson, Jr. with Long Legend. This horse is a closer, and Simpson knows this track. This is where he was injured in that accident that Sharon mentioned. Long Legend is a stretch driver, and look for him in the lane here tonight coming home. With the early pace that Mangrove will set, and probably Royal Prestige, uh, Long Legend will have to come off the pace, but he can do it, and he can do it very well. Well, that is a look at uh, some of the outstanding horses, probably the ones that are going to be favorites now. Let's see what the betters have been doing so far. Well, the, the entry, now, Surratt Lovell, strictly speaking, is not the favorite. It's the entry, including Express Ride, is the favorite, with uh, Royal Prestige not far behind Mangrove. We're back at the Meadows in Meadowlands, Pennsylvania, where the two-year-old Trot is just ahead in the Breeders' Crown Series. Bill O'Donnell in to drive, uh, one of the great drivers in the world. He's driving on the take. This is the uh, Speedy Somali Colt out of Canada, Lacavalle Enterprise owns him, and Bill O'Donnell is in town to drive this for Jean-Paul Gautier, who is the trainer of this colt, and I'm sure Gautier is very happy to uh, have a driver of O'Donnell's uh, caliber here. Now, the horses are getting ready to, to move behind the gate, because the start is uh, pretty close. Let's get on to Kenny, who is trackside. Kenny? Thanks, Sharon. You and Stan have been talking about the favorites. A couple of interesting bats here. May not win it, but could get up in the money, and you certainly have to like the odds on predominant at 35 to 1 and also long legend is now at uh, 9 to 1 getting ready to go off and long legend looked pretty good in lexington last week could finish in the money tonight sharon and thank you kenny stan any thoughts on the strategy that we're going to see real quickly well i would think that you see stanley dancer go out with mangrove and royal prestige who's in the second tier can follow anybody he wants out of there in pennsylvania and i'm pretty sure that hulk and Wallner will choose to follow stanley dancer out hopefully to get position and uh, as I mentioned, Long Legend will have to come off the pace. Okay, the two-year-old Colts are lining up behind the gate. The driver's trying to get their noses up to the gate. Our track announcer here at the Meadows is Roger Houston. As these Colts go around the first turn, getting ready for the start, let's send it to Roger right now. Roger? Trotters are all moving in behind the gate. From the rail out, Surratt, Lobel, Mangrove, Farm King, on the take. Express ride. Long Legend, Salem Low Bell, predominant. Tory Sweep, the trailer Royal Prestige. The gate swings around the turn, and there to go for the Breeders' Crown. They're up and trotting. Mangrove goes right out from behind the gate. And the outside predominant down along the rail. Surratt Low Bell between horses on the take is fourth. 
Fifth on the outside, Express right. Off stride, predominant Mango. As the race around the turn, stacking up the field, going to the quarter. Off stride at the rail, Surratt Lobel. Coming through between horses, Royal Prestige to get the lead. Racing second on the outside, past the quarter in 30 seconds flat. On the outside, now second, it's six at rest ride. Racing down along the rail, third, Farm King, trotting fourth at the rail. At the three-eighths mark, Salem Lovell, racing fifth, Tory Sweet. On the take, six, predominant is seventh, Long Legend, eighth, Mangrove, ninth, treading the field. Surat Lopel as they race around the clubhouse turn. Go on to the halfway point. It's Royal Prestige with the lead. Past the half. 101, two fifths. Express ride second. Racing third. Farm King. Fourth at the rail. Down the backside. Salem Lopel. Here comes Express Ride on the move on the outside. Going after leader, Royal Prestige. Moving up at the rail, Farm King, a close third. Racing fourth, into the turn, Salem Low Bell. Fifth at the rail, Tory Sweet. Three-quarter mark, three quarters, one, 31 and two. Backside, 30 seconds flat. But around the final turn, Royal Prestige leads the way. Express right on the outside, and along the rail, Farm King. Coming for the payoff, Royal Prestige is off stride. Farm King now has the lead. Back on the outside, Express Ride. It's Express Ride on the outside. Farm King second, Express Ride wins the Breeders' Crown. Very much, Roger. And uh, I guess everything broke exactly right for Express Ride, and I didn't mean broke as a joke. Well, it's a pun, and it's a very appropriate one, because, of course, uh, when Royal Prestige went off stride at the head of the stretch, Express Ride was right there to take advantage of it. And that is one of the great strengths of John Campbell's driving wizardry. He is hardly ever out of position, and he did a very good job piloting this colt around the turns. There was a question among horsemen's minds as to whether he could handle the turns or not. He has been doing most, virtually all of his racing on mile tracks, and that's where he established his dominance. First, of course, at the Meadowlands on the mile track there, and then at Lexington. We'll take a look at the action, and you'll see what happened. Farm King, who was on the inside and had the lead very briefly, could not hold the lead because he simply could not hold off Express Ride. So we will see here, you see Royal Prestige going off stride. Farm King down along the inside. Three of the first four drivers at that point were the Swedes. But here comes Campbell carrying the flag. He's a Canadian, of course, but uh, here in the United States. And he scores with Express Ride in the mile in 201 and 3 fifths. Here's another look here as you can see them coming into the stretch, Sharon. And right at that point as they hit the turn, Hulkenwaller is in trouble as Royal Prestige, who had won four in a row, goes off stride. Under the rules of trotting, he must get him outside where clearance exists and take hold and restrain him, which he's done. Farm King on the inside, but simply cannot hold off the on-rushing Express Ride, who tonight establishes himself as the king of the two-year-old trotters and as the richest two-year-old trotter in the history of the sport. Royal Prestige, though, is certainly a horse to watch for next year. You notice how quickly he got back out on stride and he got himself a piece of that purse. So it was not a completely wasted trip, although I explained that to Hawk and Volner right now. He probably doesn't want to hear it. So here is the leader of the division. Next year, well, we might look at some of these other colts as well. So Express Ride, the champion so far of the three-year-old or two-year-old trotting colts. Back in a minute. Express Ride is the winner of the Breeders' Crown Trot for two-year-old Colts and Geldings. He was a $140,000 yearling. He's worth considerably more than that right now. Castleton Farm, uh, part owner of this horse, William Simon, the former Secretary of the Treasury, along with Henley Dawson, Jr. It's a happy group of owners. They are receiving their trophy right now. Let's go down to Delvin Miller, who is going to handle the trophy presentations. John, on behalf of the... Am I lying? Yeah. behalf of the... Meadows and Ed Ryan and Joe Hardy. It's a pleasure to present this trophy to Castle and Farm, Hanley Dawson, Bill Simon, and congratulations to George Scholey for training the horse so great and for John Camel for driving a great race. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Miller. Congratulations, Mr. Dawson. Thank you very much. 
And uh, we, as John Campbell pointed out a minute ago, it's a real gutsy performance tonight. He had a little trouble there at the start, but came right back and trotted well. He sure did. He just did a great job driving our horse for us. And we're very pleased, and we're very pleased uh, at the way George Schulte has trained this horse right from the time that we had him. Mr. Hanley Dawson, one of the owners, Mr. John Cashman, representing Castleton Farm. I know that Mr. Fred Van Lennep is home in Lexington watching tonight. Yes, he is, and uh, I'm sure he enjoyed the show great, and the win more than anything else, and Mr. Simon was in California watching the show also, so it's another breeder's crown for uh, Castleton, Dawson, and Simon combination, and George Schulte, trainer of both of them, and uh, driver of one, and John Campbell, driver of the other. Couldn't, couldn't be a greater night. It's hard to go against all those elements. you got a lot working for you there. And an impressive performance tonight. Had some problems, but Express Ride came back and uh, trotted well. Yes, Express Ride's got an attitude that uh, he wants to win. He has the desire, and he'll overcome uh, a lot of other problems to uh, get that job done. That's just what he had to do tonight, and that's what he did. Of course, you've seen a lot of champions over the years at Castleton Farm. How does he stand with uh, some of the good trotters you've seen, some of the young trotters? Well, he certainly has all the uh, ingredients of the other great trotters at Castle on his own, and uh, he's displayed that. He's won, I think, in excess of 850,000 now. He's never been worse than third, and uh, trotted in 57 and four in the end of July in a race. He tried that fast last week, and uh, he overcame all kinds of road troubles tonight, and only his second time on anything smaller than a mile track. And uh, I think that's quite an accomplishment for a young two-year-old trotter. Another thing that we've always talked about in this series, Mr. Dawson, it's always good to have a matchup of champions. You had a good one tonight in Royal Prestige against Express Ride. We sure did. And we congratulate Hoke and Walner on, on a great job that he did. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Mr. Cashman from Castleton Farm. Mr. Dawson, congratulations again. George Schulte. Thank you. Congratulations, George. He warmed up real well tonight, I know you said. Yeah, Johnny, I warmed him up the first heat for Johnny, and... Uh, he said when uh, he was fine when I went with him, and I asked him how he was when he came in with him, and he said he uh, seemed like he was better than he was last week. So uh, he's an easy colt to train. He's a, he's like uh, Mr. Cashman said, he's got a great attitude on him, and he wants to do right. So it's uh, just a pleasure to work with young animals like that. Thank you very much, George. Congratulations again. It has been a happy night for a lot of people here who are associated with champions, and they certainly have another one in Express Ride. Sharon? Thank you, Kenny. You know, Stan, one of the great things about seeing two-year-olds is looking forward to next year you know not not that being a great two-year-old isn't an accomplishment in itself but we you know we like to look at hamiltonian did we see a hamiltonian winner here maybe well this colt certainly looks like he has the ability to go on and all of the qualities as john cashman said but there has not been total correlation in recent years between two-year-old form and three-year-old form these colts race hard at two some of them come back some of them don't there's some attrition because of physical uh, maladies and injuries and others just lose the edge, and some that were not yet that quite that precocious at two develop their maturity at three and come on. So it's a very difficult task and getting more difficult each year to project how the two-year-olds are going to race at three. But I think you'll see a number of these horses, particularly Royal Prestige and Express Ride, back battling again next year, and it'll be worth waiting for. Well, it certainly happened in the two-year-old pacing colts, at least with one of them last year, came back pretty good as a three-year-old so that is uh, a, a look at the uh, you saw the odds or the payoffs really there for the uh, first three finishers and there is express ride as we see him trotting to his victory in the breeders crown race for two-year-old colton gelding trotters he is a very rich young horse right now it's just about time for some final comments on what we saw in the breeders crown race for two-year-old trotters tonight let's get on to kenny who is trackside kenny Thank you, Sharon. We had some horses of interest tonight, and as far as they went off at some long odds at the end, it might be in the running late in the contest, but of course it was Royal Prestige and Express Ride, the one that most of the folks are putting their money on tonight, and with good reasons, as we've seen the way everything developed coming into the stretch, some tough luck for Hulk and Walner. But a nice race for Express Ride, had some problems early, and recovered real well, and as John Campbell said, that is rare sometimes with a two-year-old trotter, but he was impressive tonight. Sharon? Well, thank you, Kenny and Stan. We did see some impressive uh, two-year-old trotting colts tonight, but how about two-year-old pacing fillies for next week? This is something we've really got to encourage people to see. Well, they're great ones. We have Follow My Star and Caressable and Valentina and Razzle Hanover and New World Record Holder all meeting. As far as tonight's race is concerned, Sharon, I want to say two things. The irony of Royal Prestige showed no breaks, no gate breaks at all on his program card, made one tonight that was costly, and the ability... Uh, incredible ability of John Campbell. In the, we saw him win two weeks ago with Sandy Bowl when that horse went off stride briefly and Campbell got him back. And while he gave proper credit tonight to this colt getting back quickly, it was partly his talent.
Okay, well, congratulations to all of them. Remember, next week, 10.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Time, the two-year-old Philly Pace in the Breeders' Crown Series. That is next week, live from Yonkers, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday, two-year-old pacing fillies. That is it from the Meadows in Pennsylvania. The Breeders' Crown has been brought to you by Hanover Shoe Farms. Tomorrow's champions are at Hanover Shoe Farms. And by U.S. Air, with service to over 100 cities across the U.S. and Canada. For Stan Bergstein and Kenny Rice, I'm Sharon Smith. We thank you for joining us from the Meadows in Pennsylvania.